Good morning. I hope you're feeling blessed in the Lord today. We're going to finish the second chapter of 1 John today. So we're going to verse number 28 and 29. I love how he ended this particular set of verses in his teaching. And now, present tense, important point. And now, little children, you and I, the church, abide in him. To abide in him is very important. He doesn't say he abides on us like a garment, but we're to abide in him. Remember when Jesus said, I in you and you in me? There is a unity between God's people and Christ. That unity is, is that Christ isn't somewhere on the outside, but he abides within us. And we abide or take up residence in him. Another place, I've said this often enough, John said it in the previous verses, that we have this same mind the mind that was in Christ Jesus. That is very, very important. So abide in him that when he shall appear, oh, now we have another positive statement. The word shall is an affirmative statement. When he shall appear, there means there is no doubt that the Lord is returning someday and that we're going to meet him. As, as the Paul wrote in Thessalonians, we're going to rise to meet him in the air. There is absolutely no doubt to that. It doesn't matter to me the terminology or the exact way in which you believe it's going to happen. That's, that's kind of a mute point. The point of importance is, is that he coming. He is coming and we are going to meet him. When is he coming again? I don't know for sure. But I do know this. He is coming. And that's the affirmative thing that John is telling us. We may have confidence. Whoa, that word confidence. That we may have confidence. The Bible says that when our heart is right with God, when we're living righteous, when we're doing the things of love, doing good, then we have an assurance. We know that the Lord not only is coming again, but we have our assurance, our hope is in him. We have confidence. Confidence is also another way of saying faith because we have a knowing. We don't doubt it. We stand, we walk, we talk, we rest our whole life on the confidence, that knowing that he is returning for us. And not be ashamed before him at his coming. When Paul wrote to Timothy, the young minister, he said, Study the word, rightly dividing the word of truth, that ye not be ashamed before God. Now we're finding John telling you and I, as little children, as the children of God, as sons and daughters, that we should not do our lives in such a way, live our lives in such a way, that we'd stand before God ashamed. And I tell you this very morning, there will be many who will stand before God ashamed because they have not walked righteously. Those who are ashamed stand in danger. And what troubles me even more is those people who are not ashamed and are not living righteous because they should be. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wow. Wow. We have the faith of Christ. You remember 
when John started out this writing, he told us that we have one mediator. We have an advocate with the Father, and that advocate is Christ. He is the propitiation of our sin. He is our Redeemer. He is our brother. And we are in him and he is in us. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. We are the bride going to meet him someday. And that oneness, and that gives us boldness to be able to speak the truth and to deny the devil and to deny those people of the world. And then in 1 John 3.21, he says, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. See, Christians don't live in fear, not if they're really Christians. We're not worried about the lake of fire and brimstone. We're not worried about that place called hell. We're not worried about death. We're not worried about the stones that the devil was going to throw at us because we have our faith, our hope, our assurance is in God and that our sins have been forgiven us and they are under the blood. And that's why we don't sin. We make mistakes, but we don't sin. I heard a young lady yesterday do a, a video and I wish... Everyone would have listened to it and paid close attention to what she was saying because she was using where Paul said, sometimes I would to do good and evil is present with me and I do that which is evil instead of that which is good. And she made a, an extremely good point that we sometimes forget to make mention to. And she was very correct in her opinion in that you can't use that as an excuse to willfully sin, because Paul was talking about the Mosaical law in those comments, and he said that law of Moses, even if we try to live according to it, we still sometimes abide within parts of that law. So do you and I, the Ten Commandments, many other parts of the law still affect us. And yet, even when we were to obey it completely, it's impossible for us to keep the law. That's why Christ came and brought us a better law. And then it has a spiritual representation that Paul was trying to teach there. That we do not willfully sin because we don't want to be ashamed before God. But we make mistakes. And we make mistakes... Because we're human and we're in the flesh. And then go on with what John said. He said, if ye know that he is righteous, okay, if you know that Christ is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Woo, that's powerful. Everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. And in 1 John 3, 7, he says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous, or even as Christ is righteous. He that, and John 7, 18, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh the glory that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. When Jesus came, Jesus did not seek his own glory, but he sought the glory of his Father. And thereby, we know that he was real and that he was true. And let me tell you, that also applies to you and I. When you see, you, you ask, how can I tell a false teacher? How can I tell a false prophet? How do I know who to listen to and who not to? Look to see whose glory they're seeking. Are they seeking the honor and, and the righteousness of Christ? Are they proclaiming Christ? Or are they seeking the glory for themselves, building their own little earthly kingdom, their own name on the sign? Or is it the name of Jesus? Seek that which is righteous. God bless you.